Welcome back to another fictionalhead.com quick tutorial. Uh, today's tip involves using smart objects to pre-prepare some photo assets for yourself or anything that you use on a frequent basis just to speed up your workflow. So today we're looking at two photos of me and my son hanging out here. Uh, and the assets that I've prepared are this Polaroid one and then this photo kind of laying on a flat surface one. Uh, and these are ones that I use frequently just to kind of give a little extra wow factor instead of using a photo inside of a box. Um, and the tip is that if you have an effect like this, you don't need to recreate it over and over every time you go to do it. Just need to kind of lay the groundwork for yourself so that it's easy to adjust later on. So as you can see, I've got the shadow layer and the photo layer of my asset broken apart. Uh, and that's just so that I can keep a different layer mode on the shadow of multiply, which allows that sort of, um, if you see here, that allows the shadow, which is generally, oops, that allows the shadow, which is, all it was was just a photo of a piece of pa paper taken on a piece of white poster board. Um, it allows that extra white to disappear. And when you set it to multiply, it falls right through and you just get that background and then you can cover it up with just a clipped out shape of your photo. So by doing that and turning these both into smart objects, I can now easily jump into the smart object of the main photo, which is just clipped out uh, off of another photo. And it's got some simple level adjustments to kind of lighten and darken it the way that a photo would be if it were slightly curled at the bottom here. And then it's got a little bit of a highlight up in that corner where the light was coming from when I originally took the source photo. But all that is is just another layer with a layer mask here. So if I want to update this asset with a new picture, I don't have to worry about like dragging in a different picture, you know, trying to scale it and get it just quite right and clipping it and then adding the shadow and everything. I can just jump into my main photo, drag in the new photo. I'm going to turn the opacity down slightly so I can see what I'm doing. Pick distort. Put the corners kind of roughly where they need to be. You'll know the more that you do this, you really don't need to be too perfect. It really depends on which asset you're using. That seems just about right. Turn the opacity back up. Say OK. Throw the layer mask on it. Throw the other one away. Save and close. And now that asset has been perfectly stretched and aligned to my shadow. And I don't need to worry about going about applying any of those effects. Uh, same thing here for the Polaroid. Uh, just kind of a more interesting way to show a photo. I don't need to worry about editing this because it's a smart object. Um, it already tells me if I go to transform it, what angle it's at. So it also allows you to quickly snap it back to straight if you ever need to. Um, I just double click the Polaroid. You can see I have it set up as just a standard straight uh, Polaroid with the center clipped out of the with a layer mask here. I've got a frame which covers up that and then I've just got a little layer here for the shadow. And all I have to do is just throw a new photo in. So I'm gonna go grab, again, my son laying like a sack of potatoes on a mattress. Drop him in there, just say okay. If you want, you can leave the other photos in there depending on what usage you're gonna have. If not, just throw that away, save and close. And now we've updated this Polaroid with a different photo here. And it really just becomes that easy if you wanna do more of this effect. You just pop open your source material, drag and drop a new photo, scale it up. Since you've already got a clipping mask, you don't really need to worry about any of the extra data. Just place it how you want it. Say okay, throw away the other one save, close, and now we've got another pol Polaroid with perfectly cropped and clipped and the shadow and everything's all handled. And as far as the parent document is concerned, it's just one asset that I can quickly drag around. Um, so again, your, your particular asset might not be Polaroids and clipped pictures, but anything where you've done sort of a significant amount of prep work, uh, it really makes sense to just kind of frame that up as a separate document, save it off, and then if you ever need to reuse it again, uh, you've really just kind of laid the groundwork for yourself to make quick edits and not have to worry about doing all the comping and stuff over and over and over again. Um, 
So that is the tip. If you found it helpful, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you want more of these types of tutorials, feel free to subscribe or hop on over to my channel to watch more of them there. As always, if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover, just let me know in the comments. See you next time.